Orange County Board of Supervisors meeting, recorded December 19, 2023. It's 5 o'clock, we'll call the Orange County Board to order. Uh, clerk will call the roll. We have 23 supervisors <coughs> present. Supervisor Dubeck is excused and Supervisor Hakala is remote. Pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Invocation by Supervisor Sislevich. Dear God, we are gathered here today for a service. When you think of the word service, what comes to mind? Good service at a restaurant? Service can be interpreted in many ways. We are here to do a service for every one of our county constituents. How can we service our county? Let's pray that we can all come together on the issues that arise and affect all of us on a daily basis. Setting forth a path and paving the way for our next generation. Having the ability to work together in unison to create continued growth and prosperity for our county for days and years to come. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> public notice. Members of the public who wish to address the county board on specific agenda items must register their requests. At this time, with such comments subject to reasonable control of the county board chair as set forth in Robert's Rules of Order. Lee, do we have anybody? No one from the public wishes to speak. Moving on to correspondence. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Number two, Office of Portage County Clerk out of county resolutions. And number three, Wisconsin Counties Association Forward Analytics K through 12 on the ballot using referenda to fund public schools. I think next year I'll see if I can get Mr. Knapp from Forward Analytics to either appear online or to actually come here to uh, speak to us. He's, uh, if you haven't heard him speak at any of the Wisconsin County stuff, he's actually a pretty interesting uh, gentleman to speak with. So, Presentations. Number four, Congressman Derek Van Orden, uh, legislative update. everybody it's great to be back in Wisconsin uh, thanks for having me here I just want to cover a couple things I'll tell you the committees I'm on and then that phone call that I just got is very important to everybody uh, I'm on the transportation infrastructure committee I do rural development roads and water I'm on the veterans affairs committee I'm one of five freshmen that chairs a subcommittee so I do economic opportunity for veterans and then I am also on the agriculture committee which is incredibly important I do rural development uh, trade and then dairy stuff which is cool. That phone call I just had was from a guy named Jason Smith. He's the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee because you may have heard that the uh, Social Security Administration wants to recoup money. They overpaid people who are on disability and are elderly and they're trying to recoup that money. And we are of one mind that we think that that is wholly inappropriate. So if the federal government has paid somebody, overpaid them disability, that's on the federal government. So we can't have the federal government taking money out of people's pocketbooks that they gave them to them erroneously. So that was the chairman. He's the most powerful member of Congress other than the speaker. And we are six and seven on this. So I get back. We're going to try to craft some legislation to make that uh, unlawful. So our seniors built the country and we need to respect them. That's not an entitlement. People have been paying into this system their whole life. So I think even the word needs to change. So just so you know, if you've heard that going around, that is true, that the Social Security Administration is trying to get that money back. And here's another truth, that uh, me and the Ways and Means Committee are working very hard to prevent that from happening, <coughs> because I don't think it's OK. Uh, we're working with some projects here in the community. I'm very happy about that. Uh, that's called community-directed spending, meaning uh, you guys get to tell us what you want done. And then my legislative team uh, helps craft a package, and then we submit that. And it um, sounds kind of funny to say, but I'm very proud to say that I submitted uh, more community-directed projects than all of the other seven members of the Wisconsin delegation, Democrats and Republicans, combined. And the reason being is that people in Washington, D.C. should not be telling you 
what you need to do in your community. People in Madison should not even be telling you that. You guys should be telling me that, and then I should be doing the paperwork to help you build your community because you live here. And I'm really happy that things are progressing here. Um, with that, I don't want to take a bunch of your time, but we'll take a few questions and then uh, carry on with the meeting. Does anyone have any questions? Anybody Uncomfortable have ones, what are you talking about? Bob, hit it. Yeah. Um, He's going to ask me several uncomfortable, <laughs> awkward questions. Well, I, I, I say they're uncomfortable questions because I don't think um, Congress is of a mindset to figure these out. But what I want to know is, is there any motion in Congress to address the critical needs that are going unmet in our third district communities? And by that, I mean uh, the affordable housing shortage being number one. Um, secondly, the early childhood care crisis, the lack of um, right. staffing for that, owing to the lack of funding because uh, working parents, even at forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, are, are going broke because of these costs. Yep. And another item that comes to mind would be the. Um, the elder care crisis, again, lack of workforce. So we have a workforce shortage in Wisconsin. Yep. And it may be because there's not, we're kind of uh, low on the pyramid, I'd say, for funding from the federal government to yep. fund these human needs that are not met by the markets. In other words, we have, we have a lot of broken business models and a lot of failed markets, and, and those are going to have to be made up somehow. And I think we have to look to the people with the purse strings in uh, Washington and Madison. So that's my question. So I got affordable housing, affordable child care, and then elder care. Well, elder care itself, or getting elderly people back into the workforce. One of those two. So housing, generally speaking, is a much more of a local and a state issue. We have. I don't ever want the federal government to tell you where to build a house or to how, how to how to build that house specifically. So meaning you guys should be deciding where you have to or where you want to build housing and what the federal government should be doing is laying a level playing field. So what you're referring to possibly is like Section 8 housing where it's government funded stuff. Um, those are generally built in rural or urban areas. And Scott, you'd know better how much section housing do we have here in Portage County? I apologize. I don't know the exact numbers okay. on, on how much. So that's, that's a HUD thing, which is actually part of the executive branch, not with Congress. And we haven't, I'm unaware of us getting any requests from the executive branch in a budgetary process to increase that. So that, that is a function of the executive branch. The child care thing, uh, Education and Workforce Development. The chairwoman of that is Virginia Fox. She's a very good friend of mine. And they're trying to figure something out to assist in child care. And just so you, you don't know me, but my background, I, I was raised in a broken home in abject rural poverty by a single mother. So I was a latchkey kid. And these things are very near and dear to my heart. Um, as far as getting elderly people back in the workforce, Jason Smith, again, the chairman of the Ways and Means, I've been talking to him for a long period of time because what happens is you have someone who is on a fixed income, and if they earn too much money, they lose a bunch of benefits. And so there's, I don't want this to be a hard line, I want it to be a gray line. Um, I volunteered to be on the SNAP committee, which is, it used to be known as food stamp, so, you know, EBT stuff. I volunteered to be on that because I was raised on food stamps and government cheese and subsidized lunches. Uh, those programs have a lot of value. And I'll be frank with you, I spent a lot of time talking to my Republican colleagues, explaining to them that these programs have value, because they really do. So I don't want a hard line. I want more of a gray area around that threshold. Because you're right, elderly people or older people, if they want to work and they're capable of doing so, should be able to work without having to worry about losing all these other benefits. It's just not right. And I know that's not a super popular position with the Republican Party, but I don't care. I mean, the, our older generation built this country. We're reaping the benefits for your labor. I'm not saying you're older, but you know, you are. And so, so am I. So you guys built this country, and if you want to get back into the workforce, 
you should be able to without being penalized for it. And so that's a Ways and Means Committee issue that I've been speaking to Jason. Again, he's a very good friend of mine. So it's clearly recognized. It's just so hard to tear these things apart, get down to the root cause. I mean, it's a line item in legislation. I read every piece of legislation that is put in front of me. So I probably read 200 and some pages of legislation every single day I'm in D.C. I do 16-hour days back there. Because you sent me, or half you didn't send me, probably more than half you didn't send me to D.C., and that's fine. I still represent you just as equally as everybody else. So I owe it to you to get down to the brass tacks and all this stuff. My portfolio is so large right now that if I go over to the Ways and Means Committee and start doing stuff, the, the Agriculture Committee is going to suffer for that. So I'm really hyper-focused on my portfolio right now. That's why those are kind of tangential talks with Jason right now. The one thing that I'm super, I almost, the one thing that really gets me hopped up is, is this trying to take people's money back that was overpaid by the government, because that is just not right. Um, okay, I'm working. Ma'am, do you have one? Is that it? Anybody else have any questions? Oh, wait, he's, yes, sir. Supervisor Barry Jakowski. Uh, thank you, Con Congressman Van Orton, for taking My name the is time Derek. to address the body. Will you call me Derek, please? Oh. Okay, Derek. Thank you. Uh, and again, thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I would ask that you do uh, with your colleagues is do whatever you can to get our federal uh, dollars coming back when it comes to our transportation funding. I realize that a large share of that comes from the state level, but any time that we are uh, fuel taxes leave here and because we're not the great municipalities of Madison or Milwaukee, right. the, the larger cities of the state, the Green Bay area is Eau Claire, we have trouble funding our local, both uh, our county and uh, a township road. So anything that you can do for us to bring some transportation dollars, we certainly would appreciate it. So. Well, um, I will. And so points the third largest city in the district, you know that, right? Okay, across market. So for us, relatively speaking, this is a big we're, city. We're all in the same boat, exactly. Right. And so my issue and the reason I really enjoy this community directive spending thing, formerly known as earmarks, is because it doesn't go to Madison. It comes here. And how it normally works is Washington, D.C. gives money to Madison. Madison gives it to, to Milwaukee and Madison, a little bit to Kenosha, and some up, up to Green Bay, right? So we can circumvent that system if I get direct input from you. You know what I'm saying? Certainly do. Okay. Yeah, we scrap about this all the time. I'm not a big government guy, but I understand that, that government has value, especially when we're talking about our seniors and our infrastructure and our veterans. That's why those committees, I've gotten, I don't know how many bills through already. I mean, like nine are through already as a freshman, and I've co-sponsored a bunch of stuff and letters. None of them made the news except for whole milk for healthy kids because I got spoofed on Saturday Night Live, which was actually kind of funny. Um, and I'm, I'm cool with that. I call them enlisted committees. It's problem, identify a solution, figure out a legislative policy fix for that that is the solution, and then find another one. And just we grind it out every day. So, yes, sir. It, and Derek, I want to add to that, Derek. One other thing that the other, uh, the, as far as the federal government, they probably don't talk about it as much because we are the only state in the country where the counties are the ones that maintain the roads and, and they have uh, the state contracts out all of the road work. Right. I'd be curious as what other states pay in their transportation, <laughs> what their spending is annually compared to what the states is for having each of the municipalities do it. Colby, write that down, will you? Just, just as a thought yeah. because... When it comes to transportation, again, they're probably not worried about it as much as we are in the state of Wisconsin because we are the contractors with, all, with uh, well, the responsibility the, of maintaining that for the state. One of the things, I'll give you an example of kind of how weird Washington, D.C. is. Um, I got with the road builders, and there's new technologies that are available that drastically cut the cost of building a road. But because of the way these regulations are written, and they go through the Department of Transportation, they can't use those technologies because it's not in the book, you know? And I'm like, well, how do we change the book? Well, I got to talk to Secretary Buttigieg, who I did speak to in his, his second charge last week. I'm like, can we just maybe update some 
manuals so we can use the available technology so that we can save you know 25 percent of the cost yeah and at, well, at, at the state level we have a very good uh, secretary of transportation yeah. and craig thompson so and i know he's looked at a lot of different ways to cut some of the red tape to make things easier and to move things through uh, for the uh, counties in well, the state level i'll have max seltzer who does my t and i portfolio get a hold of him and we'll we'll get brass tacks we'll, we'll get some some answers at least cool supervisor laddick you had a question well, um, actually, it was answered, so thank you. Oh, yep. <laughs> all right. Very good. One more question, and then I'll get out of your hair. Do you else have any other questions? Okay, last thing. Um, Merry Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas. Uh, I want you to have a great time with your families. And uh, if you're going to come out, to, there's oh, the, the other thing. I can't read your mind. I cannot read your mind. So if you have an issue, Scott Soik is sitting right back there. And he'll give everybody your number. And Ms. Shanklin's got my personal cell phone number. Something comes up. Um, I can't read your mind. So get a hold of us early, and we will work on a problem if we can. And I promise you this, we'll work as hard as we possibly can. And that's about all I can promise, because Washington, D.C. is amazing. Here's the other thing. If you're going to Washington, D.C., or you're bringing your family out there, or your kids are in school and they're doing a school group, Get a hold of my office sooner rather than later. We'll bounce it off the legislative calendar. And if I'm there, I will meet you. I'll walk you around. It, sometimes they take like three or four hours. If most people enjoy the Capitol tourists. Some don't. Um, and if I'm not there, my staff will still meet you and walk you around on a Capitol tour. You don't have to stand in line, skip all that stuff. Okay? And I want you to come out and see your house. And I'm going to show you one thing. It's my favorite quote. It's when tillage begins, other arts follow. The farmers, therefore, are the founders of human civilization. It was Daniel Webster in 1840. It's in this off hallway that I found because I took a right. I was supposed to take a left to go to the bathroom, and I got lost. And I took a right, and I found that quote. I'll show it to you. It's my favorite spot in the whole capital. So with that, God bless you and your families. Thank you very much for letting me come here and talk to you. And you guys uh, take care of the county. I know you will. Call us if you have any issues. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Chris. So, review and approval of November 14th, 2023 minutes. Motion by Supervisor Laddick, seconded by Supervisor Barry Joukowsky. Corrections, changes, discussion. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Claims. Discussion and possible action on uh, recommending disallowing a of claim against Portage County for property damage submitted by Hanson Law Group LLP for claimant Jonathan Bowell. Take a motion. Motion by Supervisor Jankowski, seconded by Supervisor Barry Jankowski. Discussion. Supervisor Moresi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just wondering, has this been investigated further than just saying no to the claim? There's preliminary inquiry and primarily a discussion with our uh, insurance carrier representative. And so there has been some preliminary inquiry, nothing that you know can be publicly disclosed during this meeting. But sure. the recommendation through the insurance carrier and through my office is to disallow it and to have me provide official notice to the claimant of the disallowance. I believe we've had several, I've been on the county board for a long time, Jeannie has too. I think it's pretty much standard procedure for, for this uh, type of uh, item and that uh, lets things continue to work its way through. I guess my follow-up question would be is, uh, if, if the claimant is, uh, if, if this is a valid uh, complaint, um, I guess, why would the sheriff not seek out the owner prior to moving forward in this home? This is just the, the legal process, how okay. to address these types of claims. All right. So then will we be hearing more about this later? Because I'm just concerned about us going into people's property without their permission. That's, that's an allegation. So this is part of the legal process that, I'm just that the county that follows and then the claimant will have legal opportunities to follow up with their legal opportunities. Okay. okay. So we will or will not hear more about this later. That's going to depend on what the claimant decides to do. 
Gotcha. Thank you. There you have a motion and a second. There's no further discussion. All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number seven, resolution uh, reporting and approving large scale service contracts, inmate food service for 2024, 2025, and 2026. This is resolution 190 2022 2024, submitted by the Public Safety Emergency Management Committee. Motion by Supervisor Pataki, seconded by Supervisor Splinter. Discussion. There's no further discussion. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number eight, approving and authorizing a contract with Micahson <coughs> and Sons Trucking LLC to operate the Portage County Transfer recycle, Recycling Facility and to transport recycling materials to a licensed material recovery facility for year 2024. This is resolution 191-2022-2024 submitted by the Solid Waste Management Board. Motion by Supervisor Moresi, seconded by Supervisor Gifford. Discussion. Supervisor Moresi. Just want to apologize for the committee for being absent that day. I had a home emergency and uh, failed to call in before the time. So I apologize to the committee. But thank you for doing the good work. <laughs> Uh, there's no further discussion. All those in favor with aye? aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number nine, approving and authorizing a recyclable uh, commodities. commodities supply agreement between Portage County and Outagamie County. This is resolution 192-2022-2024 submitted by the Solid Waste Management Board. Motion by Supervisor Moresi, second by Supervisor Medin. Discussion. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number 10, changing the pay structure and rate of pay for county board of canvassers and county election tabulators. This is resolution 193-2022-2024 submitted by the Executive Operations Committee and Human Resources Committee. Motion by Supervisor Matt Joukowsky, seconded by Supervisor Soslevich. Discussion? There's no further discussion. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number 11, authorizing an agreement with Justice Point, Inc. to provide staff and service for Portage County's treatment court program. This is resolution 194-2022-2024, submitted by the Judicial General Government Committee. Motion by Supervisor Rockman, seconded by Supervisor Moresi. Discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor with aye? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 12, authorizing an agreement with Justice Point, Inc. to operate Portage County's day report program and center. This is resolution 195-2022-2024, submitted by the Judicial General Government Committee. Motion by Supervisor Dodge, seconded by Supervisor Hemorrhage. Discussion? There's no discussion. All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Approving and adopting a revision to Portage County Code of Ordinance, Section 3.11.13, parens 8, employees' <laughs> rules of conduct prohibiting uh, or Prohib prohibitation regard regarding sexual harassment. This is resolution 196-2022-2024 submitted by the Human Resources Committee. Motion by Supervisor Rakowski, seconded by Supervisor Moresi. Discussion. All those in favor with aye? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 14, authorizing 2023 budget amendments and transfers. This is resolution 197-2022-2024 submitted by the Finance Committee. This resolution requires a two-thirds supermajority vote. Motion by Supervisor Laddick, seconded by Supervisor Murrell. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number 15. <coughs> Authorizing a 2024 budget amendments and transfers. This is resolution 198-2022-2024 submitted by the Finance Committee. This also requires a two-thirds supermajority vote. Motion by Supervisor Rakowski, seconded by Supervisor Hemrich. Discussion? 
All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Number 16, authorizing property insurance coverage for 2024. This is resolution 199-2022-2024 submitted by the Finance Committee. Motion by Supervisor Morrow, seconded by Supervisor Soik. Discussion? There's no further discussion. All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let's take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Supervisor Laddick, seconded by Supervisor Pataki. All those in favor with aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned, everybody. Thank you. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.